Hello everyone, and welcome back to lecture 8 on our introductory course to quantum computing. Today, we'll be talking about the quantum stack. So first, let's take a look at an overview of the full quantum computing stack. On the top, we have quantum software. Then we have classical software. Following that, we have the quantum program compiler, and then the classical control hardware. And finally, at the bottom of the quantum computing stack, we have quantum hardware. Throughout the rest of the lecture, I'll go over each of these aspects of the quantum computing stack and what their role is within the stack and its importance to the quantum computer. So first, we'll start from the top of the quantum computing stack in quantum software. So quantum software is the language in which you actually write your programs, quantum circuits, and quantum algorithms in. <clears throat> so for example, we have Qiskit from IBM, Circ from Google, Forest from Rigetti, and Penny Lane from Xanadu. These listed on the right are all software development kits or SDKs, and a lot of them are based off of Python. There are solitary quantum computing programs as well, but they I just haven't listed them here. Next, we have classical software. So as mentioned on the previous slide, all the SDKs listed on the previous slide use Python to actually create quantum circuits. So there, all of these SDKs are based off of Python. So you'll be using Python if you wish to code quantum circuits using those SDKs. So things like your variable declaration, your data structures, functions, and for loops will all have the same syntax as Python. Other useful libraries for Python include SciPy and NumPy, as it allows you to conduct scientific and numerical computations. After the quantum software, we have the quantum program compiler. So the quantum computer that you are coding on or executing your circuits on does not actually understand the code or the block circuits that you create. This is where the quantum program compiler comes in. The quantum program compiler converts normal code into a language that the quantum hardware and classical control hardware can understand and execute. So it is sort of the intermediary step between quantum hardware and uh, your quantum software. So now we have the classical control hardware. So classical machines are actually the ones that perform quantum gates on quantum hardware. And different types of qubits are controlled differently using different classical machines. So for example, superconducting qubits in specific perform quantum gates by having microwave pulse sequences applied to them and different pulse lengths and shapes correspond to different gates as well. So the classical control hardware is the one that actually manipulates the qubits and creates the effects of quantum gates on quantum hardware, which is why they need instructions sent to them as well. And last but not least, we have the quantum hardware. So quantum hardware are the devices that which the quantum devices which make up the quantum computer. Mainly these are qubits. As mentioned before in previous lectures, these qubits are extremely sensitive to the environment, which is why they must be cooled down to extremely low temperatures, like like one millikelvin, using big dilution refrigerators. So on this final slide of the lecture, I put together a list of some of the quantum hardware that you might see when you're investigating quantum computing. So first, we have nuclear magnetic resonance qubits. Then we have trapped ion qubits, which are one of the main types of qubits being investigated right now. Third, we have topological qubits. Fourth, we have superconducting qubits, which alongside trapped ion qubits is also heavily being investigated in research right now. Fourth or fifth, sorry, we have diamond NV center qubits. Then we have photonics and photonic qubits. And finally, we have neutral atom qubits. So as you can see, 
there is still a large variety of different quantum hardware being researched to figure out which type of qubit will be the best in creating a quantum computer. So that's it for today's shorter lecture. I hope that from this lecture, you can understand how the full quantum computing stack works and how each part of the quantum computing stack is important in its own right. Next lecture, we'll be talking about the applications of quantum computing. See you next time.